I love my mission of showing everybody that they are allowed to really feel themselves. I love to bring people to their own core energy. You know, I mean, don't be stupid with things, but what will remain if you die? Stories and pictures. That's it. A short introduction about yourself. Well, my name is Salomir Lozano. I'm German-Mexican. I'm here in Stuttgart. I work as a life coach and a photographer and artist. Um, I had a film company. I still have it. We do some storytelling and I work well all over the world. And uh, yeah, I, li I, love, uh, I love working with people. That's a big thing for me. And I love to include all kinds of arts, mostly the photography, also music, film, everything that has a good story in it and value. And I love to bring people to their own core energy, which is not always simple and not always easy, but always funny and a lot of fun. What makes you get up in the morning? <laughs> hmm. Good question. What makes me get up in the morning? I love my mission of showing everybody that they are allowed to really feel themselves and just to, you know, allow themselves to shine and that a day of shooting is a day just for them, you know, without shame, without guilt, without who am I to do that? Why should I do that? Oh, I don't need that, you know, because I don't need that usually means I can't afford it or I don't feel I have the value that I allow myself to do that. These are the, the two big ones and I don't need that. Sometimes you don't need something. Okay, like I don't need more salt to my food. I don't need that, but it's a different, I don't need that. So getting up in the morning is, um, of course, I mean, if you're an entrepreneur, people know that yeah, there's a lot of work around your mission, like the paperwork, like all of this stuff as well. But I, I love what I do, you know. And so if people ask me if you would be, I don't know, a billionaire or something, what would you do with your life? And I say, I would still have the same mission. I would be maybe a bit more picky with some things. So I would travel more than I already do when I work. And I would take more time off just for myself maybe, but the mission would still be the same to, to spread the love and the self-love or self-friendliness, as I say, because self-love is a huge word, but that's, that's the core mission. And you can read it everywhere now and everybody's talking about it. Yes, 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 yes. It's still true. And why do you think that people don't have this natural self-friendliness or why are they not able to fight, fill their full potential these days? Well, first of all, we are brought up that way here in the Western world. You know, always say no, don't put yourself in front. You, you think of yourself at last, let everybody else there be, be, be there, you know. So just finding the power to, to tell yourself, no, this is only about me without feeling guilty that's the point it's not easy it's also not easy for me it's not easy for anyone you know uh, um, for example spending money on something that is just for fun without feeling the least guilt you know spending time in front of the tv watching netflix uh, playing the playstation doing something just for, uh, just for you without feeling any guilt it's really hard, you know. Sometimes we do a lot of things that just come, that like keep us, you know, sedated and, and distract us from what we really want. Um, there are a lot of psychological reasons why that is. Um, it's the, the self-protection program of your ego and of your comfort zone usually. But um, sometimes, you know, unless it's something sporty and you go out for the fresh air, that's also good. that's always good, you know. But sometimes it's, you know, I want to have this photo shoot just for me. I want to have this vacation just for me, without my kids, without my spouse, you know, just for me. Why? Why are you so selfish? You know, so this is this is a core thing that people that keep people away from really listening to themselves and really being their own energy. And uh, sometimes it's not possible because you have a lot of duties and a lot of um, you know, um, um, conditions to fulfill, but at least once a year or twice a year, or if you can make it once a quarter, you should really have a day or maybe even a weekend or something just for you to refill your energy, to recharge your energy. And if that helps, maybe telling yourself that if I do that for me and I recharge my battery, I can help others recharge more. That could be a, a simple, you know, uh, affirmation for yourself so you don't feel that bad and the more you do it the better you feel yeah why did you have trouble to find yourself well um 
the point is making it easier for themselves than it was for me uh, is because I had these struggles, you know, of, of not doing things for me, doing things in my area and in my work uh, because I thought that's the way you should do it. So because others did it that way, they had uh, success with that. And starting to listening to yourself and doing what you really want with all the consequences that it may be not work. Um, is a is a is a bold step, you know. And um, I had nobody who told me just do it. I come from a from a family that is a bit more protective. And what if, what if, what if, you know, the the German angst. So um, in in all kinds of way, uh, I think sometimes you need a mentor. You need some someone to just um, tell you it's okay if you want to do that. Just do it. But also think of it, not just, you know, ah, I want to do it. I don't care about anyone. I just, whatever, I want to throw myself in front of the bus. I will survive. No, you won't. You know, I mean, don't be stupid with things. But just if you if you have an urge, if you have an urge, do it. If you want to become an actor, become an actor. If you want to be an accountant, be an accountant. Do it, you know. And if it, it's not working out and after two, three, four, five, six years, you say, nah, it was good for a time, but I will leave it. Then leave it. It's also okay, you know. It's not the time anymore that you're married to a job for 50 years. And how did you trust yourself or how did you find it to do the step to do what you want to do? By doing it. By doing it. I have a lot of demons in myself. I have a lot of doubts all the time. I have a lot of struggles all the time as well. It's not that oh, he knows how. I just have my techniques where I can fight my shadows and keep them in the cage. Sometimes they come out. Sometimes I'm like, oh, everything is shit. But there are simple little tasks that I can, that help me. For example, if there's something I have to do that costs less than five minutes, I do it just in that moment. And if there's something I really do not want to do, like sitting there once a month doing all my numbers, for the accountants, I yell very loud, do it now, do it now. I look into the mirror, say, do it now. And mostly it works, <laughs> not always. <laughs> but these are little things and steps where I can keep my two, you know, souls. You have the artist soul that is that doesn't need all these numbers. I'm just an artist, blah, blah, blah. Everybody has that sometimes when they have this artistic soul. But you also need the manager, you know, who um, make sure that the artist has something to be artistic for. And then when the artist does its job in a brilliant way, hopefully, then the accountant has to manage everything so that the next thing can come. So it's this Jekyll and Hyde thing, you know. And if you know both sides and if you like and love both sides and if you just hug them and take them as they are with all their strengths and with all their um, um, faults, then they can make up a pretty good team. Even though they hate each other, they should learn to at least respect and know that one can't live without the other. So both sides need their um, techniques to work. The artist needs ass kicking also to be artistic. Because if, oh, the, the, I don't know, if, is that an English expression? The muse didn't kiss me. Who cares, you know, do your work. And the other one also needs to do its stuff. And that's not easy. It's not an easy task, but it's an important task. So unless most artists don't fail because they're not good, it's because they are mismanaged. Also bands and everything. By Just themselves? By themselves or because they trust blindly someone else and say, ah, I don't want to take care of that. You work with my money, you work with my everything. And then in the end they get beeped over. But that's also because they ignore the very important business side of their work which is there, you know, I mean, nobody can just live off being artistic, you know. And a client of yours once said, I read, that one photo shoot with you was better than two years of therapy. Yes. <laughs> I said, hey, I should cut charge more. <laughs> yes. Why do you think is a photo shoot better than therapy? I don't think if it's, I don't know if it's better. And I don't know what therapy she had. I just think everybody should go to a therapy or a coach, not because you have a problem, but because you want to avoid some maybe. Like what you do with your car in Germany, every two years you, you run into the TÜV, there's no psychological TÜV for the, for the, for the Germans and for any uh, human beings usually, but that's what's very important. So when she said that, um, 
she had a she had a tough time after her. She had a, a breakup with a relationship. She had a new boyfriend. She had a new a new baby coming. She had it was Corona, um, or shortly after when we were allowed to work again, and uh, so uh, the boyfriend lost a job, and there was some tough times, you know. And um, we I knew her before, and we, she, we were talking. Said, "My God, oh, I'm so like this." And I don't even want to talk about it anymore. And then I asked and I told her, come, let's do something. Okay. And so she told me that it was the first day since years that it was just about her because she was a functioning mother, a functioning uh, spouse, a functioning worker. Everything had to be done because if you, do, if you stop doing it, well, it, everything stops, you know? So, giving yourself allowing yourself this to to just taking care of you as we said that's that's i think and without the guilt and shame because there's not just me there's my team there's my hair makeup artist and whatever and we have a, uh, we, we provide a beautiful service for them and um so they just can relax it's like being in a spa in a mental spa and i guess not sitting there and having to answer the questions of the therapist or the coach because we we ask good questions. Yes, if you want to have a better life, ask yourself better questions. It's a good quote and it's true. But still just getting all the service and being there just like like this, you know, with the nails and everything. Like, oh, I think that's what she meant with this was just better than I felt so I felt so relieved. And then when she when she saw her art with this is one of them. And there's another and there's another. <laughs> you can see that on camera. <laughs> um, she she was crying, you know. Because, I mean, photography is for me, um, in Germany, you have usually two professional photographies in your whole life. The one is in kindergarten when you're a child and your parents pay it. The second one is at your wedding. And then between your wedding and your death, you can just hope somebody took a good picture of you that they can place in front of the altar when you die. That's usually how it works. Yeah. And when I ask my when I ask my my clients three questions, usually at the third one they cry. The first one I ask is whenever you will, whenever uh, something will happen to you, or whenever someone wants to have a picture of you, and they start looking, what will they find? Will they find this, or will they find a USB stick, or maybe not even that, maybe a phone? Mm. The second question I ask, um, when have you been the last time to a professional photographer? And then they usually say, at my wedding. And the last question is, when was the last time in your life that you had one day that was just for you? Also, usually the wedding. And the wedding, whoever had a wedding, I had one. It was a beautiful wedding, but it's not about you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. Uh, it is a. It can be a beautiful day. It can be the worst day, and it can be the end, the start of the end. For me, it was beautiful. But still, these things are not happening in a n normal life if you don't allow it to happen to you. Mm -hmm. So, um, a lot of clients I, I work with as a photographer later have a coaching with me, or the other way around, or sometimes we. All, I also combine some photography with the coaching. But then it's not photography that goes on water, it's like more of a documentation and just um, diving into different emotions and just having yourself, you know. And if you, if you see yourself then in this as an artwork, you don't buy it somewhere, you don't, it's not someone else, it's not Marilyn Monroe or it's not uh, David Bowie or whatever, it's you, you know. And it's not made by an artificial intelligence, by clicking, you went, you went that way. So you, you experienced it. You, you felt the fabric on your skin. You had someone to take care of your hair <laughs> or your makeup or whatever. And, and you, you were having the dress and you had smelling the perfume and the hairspray. And people were just always there. And we gave them all the energy. We just, it's like a tunnel of energy you give them, you know, and they go like this and they perform in a way they never thought they could do. And they have the proof, the physical proof that it was them and then in a beautiful way of art with a beautiful framing and everything. And then they have this as, a, as an anchor of energy, as an energy a gas station whenever they need it. That's, that's the beauty of the combination of photography and coaching. Mm. And that's why I guess they say it's better than therapy because there's the result. And even if they don't feel every day like that, they know they can. And uh, they have the manifestation, they can really touch it and feel it. That's, that's what I like. 
I never thought I would do that when I started filming because for me, I have photography for per, for private and per, personal private people. You, you shoot grandmas, babies, and and dogs. You know, I shot all three of them. It's beautiful. You know, it's, I thought it's because I was just thinking of the result. You know, when you do fashion and all that stuff, nobody cares if the model has a great day or if the model has a like a a, a moment of of uh, awareness. You know, mm. it's just about the result and it should be good, which is okay, but it's not the same. That's why I have to work differently with the people. Yeah. What will remain if you die? Mm. Stories and pictures. That's it. If you watched the video until now, this is your sign to subscribe. And if you have any more questions or a completely opposing opinion, write it down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you next week.